Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Andy Nguyen, and today we're gonna to talk about the history of JWK switches, or at least the limited history that I know, because I'm a dumb dumb. And we're gonna feature the Green Snake Switch by Moyu Studio. They're sponsoring this video, we'll get more into that in a second. When I joined the hobby in November or October 2019, there were no JWK switches. Well, they may have existed, but they haven't really hit the Western market. At this time, there were Gateron Yellows, there were MX Blacks, there were Gateron Inks, Telios, and that was pretty much it with some other switches in terms of linears. The most smooth linears at that point would be the Gateron Black and the Telios. The Gateron Black was the deeper of the smooth switch, the Telio was the higher pitched class. The MX Blacks were scratchy, but some people loved them. So you didn't really have a lot of options because the Gateron Inks as well as the Telios are very expensive. The Telio specifically. And soon after, JWKs hit the Western market. They came in the form of the Alpaca, which was a colorized JWK. It was a recolor already. It was supposed to match a certain keycap set I'll put on the screen here because I always forget. Teha the god he got his hands on them and he said that these were the future so what does that mean the alpacas are remarkably smooth even the unlived condition was remarkably smooth glass like smooth and then later on some factory grease was applied to these switches just a little bit not overlooked by any means and he was even more smooth it was crazy that this linear switch could keep up with the more expensive Gateron ink at 65 70 cents or so and the Telio, which is at about a dollar what right prime kb was having trouble keeping them in stock and they were selling out within seconds as soon as the 55 cent switch was sold out people would try to flip them on the market for a dollar or more those people are utter trash and vendors noticed that they were very popular these alpaca jwk switches they were very reliable and they did the job they made keyboards sound great now comes the recolors alpaca itself was already a recolor and the vendors started doing more and more and more recolors normally the jwk that came in the form of the alpaca was a polycarbonate top nylon bottom palm step remember those specs the mob was supposed to be a nylon top which theoretically should be deeper and unfortunately for me i made a video after i had asked someone to lube some switches for me and i thought they were clockier they're actually not the guy that lubed them just kind of did a light lube job wait Loop, don't demonetize me YouTube I'm talking about keyboard switches I made a video saying the switches were clackier unfortunately I was wrong I had to go back and make a video describing how I was wrong about the mob this was an infamous video perhaps you have seen it before I actually don't talk like that on a regular basis just to let you know and about the recolors vendors were dropping new JWK factory made linear switches left and right and unfortunately we never know the true material breakdown of these switches although it is a polycarbonate top and nylon bottom the percentage of the material in each part varies and they will not ever disclose it just like how Gateron will never divulge the actual plastic breakdown of the Gateron ink it's just their IP that they have to protect or else they can be cloned so the switches are different right they're recolors but they're all a little different the plastic breakdown the spring perhaps the stem what you need to know is that no two switches are going to be exactly alike. Although the Alpaca and the Mav are close, they're not exactly the same. Although the H1 is close, they're not exactly the same. I mean, they're very similar once you lube with 205G0, considering 205G0 is a lube that kind of makes switches deeper. And it also kind of masks a little bit of the individual characteristic sound of a switch. So for all intents and purposes, for a beginner coming into the hobby, JWKs are very similar once Luba 205G0. Now came the Tangerine. This is a Tangerine V2 from TKC. It's a C3 equals mold that they worked with. This was different. Instead of just a JWK mold, between the Apoc and the Tangerine, we got the experience of what was called the Invir Umwipe Stem. It's UHMWPE. I'm not going to pretend to know the acronym, but just know that it is the smoothest material that we've seen so far. So they made these stems that you can take and put into another switch, like a Gateron Ink, like an Alpaca, like a Telio, to make a Franken switch, right? Taking different parts from different switches, putting them together, and making a new switch. In my opinion, although it is very smooth to use the unwiped stem, I don't like the sound. It, it sounds very dull on the upstroke clap. And the whole promise of that stem was that if you're using an unwiped stem, you probably don't have to lube the stem, right? Lubing the stem is very meticulous, takes a lot of time. Unfortunately, this is not the case. You still want to lube it. So back to the tangerine. The tangerine is butt ugly. It's this like see-through orange color. And if you have perky RGB, if you're a degen like me, it just makes everything orange. It's gross. But it is a very, very smooth switch. Like with the unwiped stem, I thought you wouldn't have to lube these switches, but unfortunately you do. Although it is very smooth in the factory condition with a little bit of factory grease on the stem, it just doesn't sound full. It sounds very plasticky, a little bit tinny.
so you do want to lube and film the tangerine. Now, once lubed and filmed, ends up sounding a lot like an alpaca. You see the pattern here? And since the JWK factory's mold for these linear switches were being run over and over and over again, Prime KB was pumping out these alpacas, the molds got worn out. And when a mold gets worn out, it just needs to be retooled and needs to be redone. So now comes the V2 JWK. The V2 molds are a little bit different. The sound out of these switches is a little bit deeper. The top housing is a little bit tighter. It's a little bit scratchier. Maybe not scratch per se, but a little bit more friction than the original V1 or vintage alpaca. And just a little tidbit, once they change the molds or once they update the molds, they can't go back. It's not like they have this little safe where they keep the old molds, it's just gone. So now we have V2 alpacas, V2 JWKs, and they're still doing more and more recolors and slight changes. So what we have is a bunch of JWK switches with different colors. They're changing the springs. So instead of the 62 gram spring, a regular short spring, they're doing long springs, they're doing double stage springs, they're doing triple stage springs. And the stems too, they're changing the molds of the stems. Instead of just a regular length stem, they're doing a long pole stem, very similar to the kale cream. And that just creates a different sound. So you can mix match these like Legos and you can come up with a new switch and sell them, send them to reviewers and have them drop an affiliate link. And that's how they make money. There's a reason why I don't do a lot of switch reviews. Until today, Moyu Studio reached out. We worked with Moyu Studio before with the Poseidon switch, which was a full nylon JWK recolor with a long pole stem. And I liked it because it was kind of like, I got to talk about what a creamsicle is. A creamsicle is a Nalvaki's cream or kale cream stem in a tangerine housing. So now you're taking two expensive switches, putting them together and making one switch. It's been touted as a very smooth and clean clacky switch. The Poseidon brought that onto one switch so you don't have to buy two switches. Today's switch is the Green Snake. I'm sitting outdoors right now and this Green Snake container probably looks like drugs. Yeah, I know. There's like a family over here, they're hanging out in the pool and I hope they don't see me holding these things because it does look a little sus. The Green Snake is actually a exact copy of the alpaca. So if you go back to the alpaca, after Teha mentioned the alpacas were the future, everyone wanted alpacas. They didn't care about the Duroc L7s from AliExpress. No, I want the alpaca. Even though the final result after looping the 25U0 and filming it sounds pretty similar, but no, the alpaca became a status symbol. The Green Snake is an exact copy of the alpaca in terms of the material breakdown. But is green. Color, why does green matter? Well, the green matters because color coordination. I'll show you a clip of the stream where I have a green ginkgo and I have green snake switches and the black F4 plate. It looks pretty good matched together. I know it sounds crazy that people care about the color of their switch. It's underneath the keycap when it's all said and done, but still, if you enjoy the process, you enjoy the hobby, I'm not going to shame you if you care about the color of your switches. So the big question about these green snakes is, does it really sound like an alpaca? I'll show you a clip from the stream and yes, indeed it does. Green snake, alpaca. Okay, to my ears, bro, it's it's an alpaca. <laughs> the green snakes are factory oiled and not filmed. Like I said, JWK V2 is a little tighter in the housing and you don't really need the films in regards to top housing wobble. If you want a deeper sound, then perhaps you can install for that, but it isn't necessary. The green snake does sound very close to an alpaca. And I think indeed they did achieve in making an actual recolor of the alpaca. The alpaca compared to the mauve and the H1 is a little bit clackier if you compare one to one. And the green snake is clacky. It has a slightly longer spring as well as a slightly heavier spring weight. 62 gram in the alpaca is a little bit light for my fingers. I work out, I'm pretty strong. And the slightly longer spring just makes it feel a little bit heavier on the actuation, a little bit more comfortable to type on because with a light actuation spring, I tend to typo a lot. So it's a green recolor of the alpaca. What else do you need to know? Well, it's 60 cents in group buy. I know I'm very, very anti group buy, but if you want something of very specific color, I found that some of these colors are not being run as in stock items or rather group buys. There's the Vietnamese iced coffee switch, and now we have the green snake. So it's 60 cents on group buy. Yes, it's five cents more expensive than the alpaca, but if you're gonna buy an alpaca and you didn't like the spring weight and you wanted something a little bit heavier, like a 65 gram spring, then you would actually save a little bit of money because it's all in one package with the green snake. But I can't wholeheartedly talk about these switches without letting you know that JWIC switches exist. So JWICs are cheaper alternatives to JWKs. They're 23 cents to 30 cents each, and they are above 80% of the smoothness in the stock condition compared to JWKs. And once lubed, it's probably indistinguishable. The maker of the JWICs pretty much just wanted to have something cheaper than the 55 cent standard for JWKs. So if you want true affordability, I have some JWIC blacks and I think they're pretty solid. My friends 
honestly use them without even lubing the stem, without lubing the housing. They just lube the spring and it's good to go. Don't even need to film them. So you have these options, right? If you like alpacas, you like the pink and the gray, go ahead and go with that. If you want something green and you have a green board, because it's pretty popular these days with the green ginkgo, the green missus suit, and the green frog, right? There's a bunch of green options and it's picking up in popularity, especially with Jim K Botanical. If you want that, consider joining the group by four of these switches at 60 cents each. So there's a green snake and the ginkgo. Let's hear what it sounds like in the board. So as you can tell, dude, sounds pretty clacky. Sounds great with an FF4 plate. In my opinion, JWK and their variants typically, typically sound good with FF4 plates, and especially in a Gasket Mountain board. Now, is it gonna be the cheapest switch? No. Is it gonna be the best switch? No, it's all preference. I specifically don't make a lot of switch reviews because I find that they're a lot of the same. And this one, I think the only saving grace is the all-in-one package and the fact that it's green. If you don't care for green, go ahead and consider buying something else. Don't worry about this switch. So what are my final thoughts on the green snake? Would I buy that over other switches? Dude, I like inks. Why would you even ask that? And that's it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed my little rundown of the history of the JWKs. This video is sponsored by Moyu Studio. They just wanted me to showcase it and that I did. It's a green alpaca, all right? If you have any questions, have any comments, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.